I would like to thank VOCO for inviting me to present to you the fundamental concepts for restoring the interradicular space. And most importantly, would like to thank you because I know you could be spending time with your friends and family or creating beautiful smiles in your offices today. So let's begin, and I have 59 minutes to stimulate, innovate, and educate. Today, the clinician can choose from a variety of user-friendly posting course systems for different endodontic, restorative, and aesthetic requirements. These systems and methods are well documented in the literature. However, no single system provides the perfect restorative solution for every clinical circumstance, and each clinical situation requires an individual evaluation. Furthermore, the reconstruction of endodontically treated teeth can present restorative and aesthetic challenges for the technician and the clinician. The failure of these post-retained crowns has been well documented in several clinical studies. Many of these studies indicate that the failure rate of restorations on pulpless teeth with post and cores is higher than that for restorations of vital teeth. And there are several main causes for failure of post-retained restorations that have been identified in the literature, including recurrent caries, endodontic failure, periodontal disease, post-dislodgement, cement failure, post-core separation, crown core separation, loss of post-retention, core fracture, loss of crown retention, post-distortion, post-fracture, tooth fracture, and even root fracture. And also corrosion of the metallic post has been proposed as a cause of root fracture. Of course, there are a variety of user-friendly posting core systems available for different endodontic and restorative requirements. Custom cast metallic post, prefabricated metal and fiber post, and there are zirconium post. And there are different methods for retention, active and passive. The active post engage the dentinal walls of the preparation on insertion, where the passive post do not engage the dentin, but rely on cement or adhesive for retention. And there are even different post shapes and surface configuration. There's tapered serrated, tapered smooth, and tapered threaded. There's parallel serrated, parallel smooth, and parallel threaded. Now the traditional prefabricated metal posts are made of platinum gold palladium, brass, nickel chromium, pure titanium, titanium alloys, and chromium alloys. Although stainless steel is stronger, the potential for adverse tissue responses to the nickel has motivated the use of titanium alloy. Also, Contributing factors to root fractures such as excessive stiffness and post-corrosion from many of these metal posts have stimulated concerns about their use. In addition, prefabricated metal posts can result in a negative effect upon the aesthetic result. Non-metallic prefabricated posts have been developed as alternatives, including ceramic, carbon fiber post, and fiber-reinforced resin post. Zirconium oxide posts have a high flexural strength, are biocompatible, and are corrosion resistant. This material, however, is difficult to cut interorally with a diamond and to remove from the canal for retreatment. While the prefabricated fiber reinforced resin post flexed with a tooth structure are easy to remove if retreatment is required and have no negative effects on aesthetics. However, adaptation of the prefabricated post to the canal wall is important for retention, and in some cases, the canal must be enlarged to fit the configuration of the selected post, requiring removal of more tooth structure to achieve optimal adaptation. Therefore, these prefabricated posts have optimal adaptation and function in teeth with small circular canals. However, many root canals have irregular shaped flared canals, and the prefabricated system is contraindicated because of the improper adaptation and the required thickness of the resin cement. Today I would like to share two methods for the direct fiber reinforced resin post system, one utilizing a polyethylene woven reinforcement fiber that can be used for the treatment of irregular canal configurations, and the other a prefabricated fiber reinforced composite post. 
But before we review these techniques and materials, I would like to give you a few consideration factors for evaluating any post-retained system because I know you have seen this if you've been in practice very long. So while no single system provides the ideal restorative solution for every clinical circumstance, understanding both general design criteria and the components for the various posting course systems available can allow us to appropriately select the method and materials compatible with the existing tooth structure and desired result. A system is defined as any set of components working together for the overall objective of the whole. Selecting the proper posting course system for a specific clinical situation requires an evaluation of the various components and interfaces of the system. The components of the direct fiber reinforced composite resin post system are the root dentin surface, the interradicular post, the core buildup, the looting cement, and the crown. So the system can be analyzed in four regions, at the interradicular surface, at the post-tooth interface, within the core, and intracoronally. For the successful rehabilitation of the endodontically treated tooth, it is imperative to understand the disparity and complexity of the interrelationship of these interfaces with various restorative materials. When evaluating the interfaces of any system, their failures provide us with design principles that can be utilized with any post-crown retained system. And I would like to briefly share a few of them with you. If you would like to know more, they are all in my new textbook in Chapter 8 of Aesthetic and Restorative Dentistry, Material Selection and Technique. I hope you enjoy. Maximum post retention and core stability. The ideal post system should replace lost tooth structure while providing adequate retention and support to the core, allowing retention of the restoration while transferring occlusal forces during function and parafunction to prevent root fracture. Conservation of tooth structure. Reduction in the amount of dentin weakens the tooth and can be responsible for horizontal and vertical root fracture. Improvements in composite materials and adhesive technology have resulted in a more conservative design concept. Internal adaptation. Conventional looting cements such as zinc oxyphosphate only fill in the void between the restorative interfaces without attaching to either surface. The use of a dual cure looting agent with a fiber reinforced composite resin post has a physical and potentially a chemical interaction with the reinforcement material and the dentin that enhances the adhesive interfacial continuity.